Okay, let's get started. Ice, cold, frostbite, whatever you want to call it. I think this is my first time using frost elements as my main damage dealer. Frostbite is by far my least favorite effects other than blight and sleep. But looking at wiki, there are decent amount of frostbite sources that includes weapons, SO4, and sorceries. So with that, I make some rules for the sake of this playthrough. So the first one, I can only use weapons, SO4, and spells that can inflict frostbite buildup as the damage dealer. Second one, I need to switch weapon every time I beat one boss. This rule only applies for main bosses, remembrance bosses, and one exception for Loretta. She's not the main boss, but in this case, I put her in the main boss list. I'll tell you more about it later. Third one, I can use my current equipped weapon for side bosses like Earth Tree Avatar, Deathbird, and Dungeon bosses for example. And last one, number four, I'm allowed to use the same seal or staffs over and over again, but they need to have different spells when fighting bosses. Basically, no same spells are allowed. This video took longer to make than usual, and this is by far the most agonizing run I ever did. Like, for real though, I'm, I had enough. I almost went crazy on this one. But before we start, make sure to drop a sub so you don't miss future challenge runs. And without further ado, let's get started. Picking up my starting class, because most of the ice elements are usually scaled with intelligence, I choose Prisoner. Well, I hope I'm right though. This is probably my fifth time picking this class. I have a list of weapons and spells I'm planning to use, and some of them are either scale with intelligence or with dex. But mostly intelligence. There aren't any decent weapon at the start of the game, because I realize most of these weapons or spells can only be acquired if you progress through Rani's quest or through the main story, so it might be more difficult than I thought. But I found something. I can get Ice Twin Hatchet in Leonia without having to fight any sort of enemy at all. So it's gonna be my first weapon. Then I got the Horfrost Storm, Ash of Horror by the way, by killing the Invincible Teardrop Scarab. While I'm exploring Lyrnia, I think I'll use the Carrion Armor since it has more decent protection compared to the Prisoner set. So I'm gonna switch my armor. Going to Kaelid now for some rune grinding and acquiring Radagon Sword Seal as well. Basically the first talisman that I always get. Also, I didn't forget to kill the Elder Dragon this time to get the juicy wounds. It is time to test my weapon. As the first boss, I'm going with Loretta because there are some weapons and Ash of War locked behind her, so I think it's best to take her down first to expand my options against other bosses. I use obviously the Ice Rain Hatchet because it's the only weapon I have currently, and it has Horfrost Tom as its unique Ash of War, which I'm not gonna use by the way. Its regular attack already has Frostbite buildup, so this is probably my first time fighting Loretta at such low level because, you know, I usually beat her when I, I was over leveled. I have to get used to her moveset and also my weapon for a bit just to adjust my timing. The Hatchet doesn't really deal much damage, but at least the moveset is not terrible. I barely pull any follow-up attacks because Loretta is pretty bouncy, I would say. Not in the weird way, but she jumps a lot, right? Right? Yeah, 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 definitely she jumps a lot. All of her moves are dodgeable and her openings are also pretty wide, so I wasn't struggling at all, but sometimes I miscalculate her melee attacks because she actually did this one melee attack after casting the Green Blade magic. The best way to deal with her is to maintain my range. Not too close, but also not too far. She has Loretta's great bow on her second phase, but it doesn't matter anyway. With that, I have access to the three sister area where I can get more stuffs like uh, chilling miss. Okay, I definitely get something else, but I forgot actually. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, I took this flail from the carriage and I'm gonna infuse it with Horfrost Storm Ash of War. I know I'm not allowed to use regular weapons, but don't worry, guys. I'm only use this Ash of War to deal damage. Okay, so the weapon is just a hose. If you ask me why I picked the flail instead of other weapons, because there are a lot of weapons far better than the flail. Well. It's because that's the first weapon that came up on my mind and it's easy to get, so I don't really think that much. Doesn't matter if it's bad as long as I don't have to use it normally. For the next boss, which is Margit, I have to feel the Frostbite build up as fast as I can because the base damage from Horfrost Storm is actually pretty decent. Maybe because the weapon I use right now is not ideal so it kind of gatekeep the rest of the damage. But I don't know. The good thing about this Ash of War is it does double hits for the crystals so if I cast it at the right moment, 
While Margit was in the middle of the crystals, it can deal extra damage. The downside is that it will take a lot of FP since I'm obligated to use all the way through the battle. And luckily for me, I already got some golden seeds and basically I'm already prepared for the inconvenient. Well, it actually took longer than I expected. So I was wondering, did the build up actually cool down if I get hit? Because I got hit sometimes. But then, I was being reckless and died. And I took Margit with me. Apparently the frostbite came in the right time and I still got the W. Since I need to get more sources, I think it's worth a shot to try to kill the death bird. Not the regular death bird though, it's death right bird. It will drop one of the best weapon out there which is the death spoker. Well of course it's not gonna be easy and using the horror storm is just impossible. So I leave it for now. I travel to Leonia again to start Rani's quest. There are some stuffs like Freezing Maze and Glintstone Ice Rack that you can buy from Selefis, but before doing so, I have to play with his shenanigans by giving his potions to Nefeli. Apparently, I messed up his quest and Nefeli ended up disappearing from Stormfail Castle. I actually forgot you can give the potion to Gideon instead, but I have to beat Godric to do so. So I decided to go to use the Chilling Maze and buy this regular longsword from Roundtable Hole. Just to let you know, I'm not upgrading any of these weapons because I don't think it's necessary for early game bosses. So, Godric it is. Apparently, it did quite some damage, far from my expectation. The problem with Chilling Mist is, it took some time to cast and with that, I can only do one hit per openings, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Chilling Mist applies 120 Frostbite and it coats the weapon with Frost effects for 20 seconds. I don't know why I don't attack him normally since uh, it's not against the rules with the Frost buffs, but that's okay because the skill leaves this frozen mist on the area and that continues the frostbite buildup. I think this Ash of War is too good for Godric. I should have used it for 3 Sentinel or Morgoth. But since I don't have any other options, then it is what it is. The buildup is pretty fast. There are a couple times that he got frostbite and it depleted his health far more often. As I said on my previous and previous videos, Godric is never a hard fight. And it's far easier than Margit. Even though I died like twice this time, but at the end I still win. So after that, I went to round table hold and for some reason, the door is not open. I thought it was a bug, but all I have to do is talk to Enya and other people in the round table hold and the door is now open. I gave Gideon the potion, got back to Selophis and bought the Glintstone Ice Rack and the Freezing Mist. Because they're all sorceries, I have to get a decent staff to use them. So I went back to Lyrnia again and bought Astrologer's staff from a merchant because I couldn't get the better one without fighting bosses or progress through the game. I'm using a long range weapon for now, I think this might work against the death right bird. I was wrong. I was very very wrong. I was too frustrated and <laughs> went away to get something else like smithing stone bell bearing to upgrade my staff. Yeah, that was just crazy. Okay, now I have the upgraded astrologer staff so it should at least work against the death bird. It still didn't work. Okay, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it everything at this point. I have to reroute my strategy against it. And I saw on YouTube, people can actually cheese it with a bow. I can craft some cold bone arrow that can inflict frostbite as well by buying the recipe from Pedia. But the problem is there is this material called rim crystal bud that is very limited in the early game. And I need those to craft my arrows. So I got almost every rim crystal bud that I can get. And I made it around like... 90 cold bone arrows if I remember So I don't know what I did wrong here, but even in this spot that thing can still attack me in some way I managed to avoid some of its attack, but it's still very dangerous Some arrows deals a decent damage some didn't even tickle him But eventually I ran out of arrows and I have to deal it with using the glintstone ice rack like before Because it has a little health left. I think maybe I can kill it this time well 
Yeah, I fucked up. Obviously. <laughs> There's no way I can kill this guy. Like, for real. So I guess I need to chill for a bit. I completed various quests and enjoyed myself by farming some runes in Mogwin Dynasty. I also got the green turtle talisman so I can less worry about my stamina. Rather than thinking that's about that stupid bird, I think I'll use the Glintstone Ice Strike to fight Radan. It's necessary for Rani's quest and it will open another opportunity. By opportunity, I mean weapons and spells along the way, so yeah, Radan has to go down. I think using projectile armaments is not that bad against Radan. I mean, to be fair, we're all ganging on him, so I cannot really say anything. I was planning on using the Death Poker to fight Radan, but a Glintstone Ice Strike did the job quite well. One thing I don't like about this, because most of the fight requires me to ride Torrent, it actually makes the spell ineffective. Casting on horseback actually prevents us from sprinting and it applies on most of the sorceries which is very annoying. I can keep my distance with Radan but the spell cannot go too far. I think by defeating Radan it, it opens more options for me to pick other frostbite sources to defeat that freaking death bird. So I beat Radan. Oh sorry, we beat Radan. It has been a while and I already leveled up much more than before. So one last shot for the death bright bird. This time I'm using the Greenstone Ice Strike fully. No arrows, no nothing, and I do it on horseback. The damage was okay though and sometimes the troll that throws a magic pot actually helped me a lot. I invested too much time on this single fight but finally, after more than 4 hours in total, I beat it. And acquired the death poker. Definitely gonna put this one on the most hated pose of all time. Proceeding to the main boss finally. Next boss will be the Tree Sentinel, and the weapon of choice is Nagakiba. Well, you know, same as before, same as the flail. Nagakiba is only the host weapon. I'm using Frozen Armament Sorcery to buff the katana with Frostbite effects. Along the way, I got the Frozen Needle as well by defeating the Royal Revenant, and finally got the Nagakiba itself. So what I need to do is keep casting the buff to my Nagakiba. I'm not allowed to attack at all if it's not coated by the cold. It took me some time to get used to the casting time because it's somehow slow and I could be dead anytime. Frozen armaments give the weapon buff of 48 frostbites build up which is surprisingly low. I was expecting at least 50 build up but that's okay because with Nagakiba I can land multiple hits at certain moment. It will fasten the build up over time. So when fighting the 3 sentinel, I didn't know that apparently the buff lasts for 60 seconds. So it's actually pretty long and it could save me some time to recast the spell. This is the third time fighting 3 sentinel on foot. If you know me before all of these challenges, I never beat this guy without cheesing him with rod or with bows. That thing is intimidating as hell man, not gonna lie. I would say I picked the right weapon for this because Nagakiba has the longest reach out of all katana and it doesn't have any penalty with its attack speed as well. Before going to Lindell, I travel down to Nokron to acquire the Ghost Lamp Torch. By the way, I have to do the jump correctly or else... So I get the torch, and I want to see how that works against the Mimic tier. It took some times, but yeah, I think this is gonna work with Godfrey. <laughs> I didn't forget to get the Finger Slayer Blade as well so I can give it to Rani. It will give access to Rana's Rise for the Snow Witch set and the Divine Tower that allows me to acquire the third talisman, Stargazer Heirloom. It increases intelligence by 5. After upgrading my torch to plus 10, I think, I'm ready to fight Godfrey. Ghost Flame Torch can inflict 65 Frostbite buildup, so I mean honestly the torch is not that bad. I know people already did the torch only run, but damn, this thing can deal damage though. It's not that huge, but it's still significant. I don't really have to get used to Godfrey's moves because his pattern is solid and torch attacks isn't that slow, so I can match my timing completely. There is nothing crazy going on during the fight. It was a pleasing fight and I beat him right away. 
Well, not right away, because it took me around 4 minutes for this fight, so it's actually quite long. We got the 4th Talisman slot, and I bought the Field Grid Crest Talisman from EG. Because I'm gonna use weapon skills really often, I need something to compensate the FP cost. Also, before we proceed, I need to apologize personally to Jason Pocock. Uh, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, by the way. Because I have to do bad things to Alexander again. But please, keep this in mind, guys, that I'm not a bad person, okay? I'm just terrible at making decisions. Therefore, I'm sorry. But I got the Warrior Shard Talisman to boost the damage of weapon skills. So, yeah, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna use it with my whole heart, if that makes sense. I thought I have to fight the Twin Gargoyle or Mog to reach this area, but apparently there is a teleporter from Rena's Rise that ended up in this location. So to progress through Rani's quest, I have to fight the Shadow. Well, it's actually Blade with the Walmart version of Malekith's Blade. Tail Spoker has 65 Frostbite buildup and it has a unique Ash of War called the Ghost Flame in Ignition. Ghost Flame Ignition, yeah, sorry about that. The movesets are pretty unique and it has different variation between light attacks or heavy attacks. Luckily for me, with the Dead Spoker, I could take care of him without any issue. My After passing the Lake of Rod, I reached to the point where I forgot I have to fight Astol. I was planning to use the Dead Spoker on Morgoth, but by defeating Astol, I can get Darkmoon Greatsword and the other weapons. So, I decided to use the Dead Spoker on Astol. I was standing there for like 5 minutes in front of the arena because I was searching on Google to see what alternatives available at the moment. My plan wasn't going so smooth apparently. Okay, fine. I think fighting Astol is the only option. Obviously, the fight was difficult. I only ever fought him once and it was a long time ago, so I cannot remember anything about him. While I realize his head is his weak point, it's still hard to land a solid attack without casting the Ghost Flame skill. Astol is not that fast. The only fast attack he has is the Mandible Scrunch. Other than that, he's pretty slow. But he can be a little unpredictable sometimes. I upgraded the Dead Spoker to plus 5 I think, and it already deals a lot of damage. Entering his second phase. He will cast Meteorite of Astol and they hit pretty hard. It can one-shot you for real. So the only way to dodge it by rolling 3 times to the side. I thought it was an RNG move but it's not. It's a scripted move. Astel also has these annoying gravity attacks that he uses it really often. I don't know how to dodge that, but if I was on the distance, I make sure to stay away from those. The most effective way to damage him is to jump attack his head, but I feel very anxious whenever I did that, because he can pull out his mandible scrunch and yeah, it does a lot of damage. Somehow I beat him, after a couple of tries. If you think the problem ends here, you are very wrong. I'm so dumb and didn't realize I have to beat Renala as well to open the seal. I already used most of my weapons and spells and I don't think I can get more before defeating Morgoth. I took my time to look at wiki and found two options. First options, I still have Freezing Mist, which I bought from Selfis a couple of minutes ago that I can use to fight against Red Wolf or Dagon, or I can get Ice Spear Ash of War for a better weapon. For Renala, I can either get Dragon Halbred or a Dragon Scale Blade. Both of them requires me to beat Dragon King Soldier. I tried using Freezing Mist and it's just not working. The spell has high frostbite buildup, but it looks like it has zero base damage. I thought it works similar to Night Maiden's Mist, but apparently the Night Maiden's Mist is just far superior. It's almost impossible to beat Red Wolf with this, so I threw it away and got the Ice Spear instead by killing the Night Cavalry. For Renala, I choose the Dragon Halberd because it's much easier to get and comparing their weapon skills, I think the Dragon Halberd is more applicable to use compared to the Dragon Scale Blade. The other reason is I hate Lake of Rod, so anything to avoid going there, it's fine. Because Ice Spear requires me to get a spear, I decided to pick Cross Naginata as the host weapon, which is very easy to get. 
Right, time to test this bad boy out. Ice Spear has shorter range than I expected. The damage output is massive. Maybe because I'm already over leveled to fight Red Wolf though, so I can't really say anything about it. The Frostbite buildup is insanely fast. Only took 4 hits to trigger the proc. I really like the decent casting time, making it very easy to use. So yeah, it wasn't a problem at all. For Renala, I said it before, I choose the Dragon Halberd. The base weapon doesn't have any frost buildup, but it has a unique skill that buffs the weapon with lightning damage and frostbite buildup. The skill Spinning Slash is also faster than the regular Ash of War version. I test it out on this carrier knight and I love it already. So with the first phase of Renala, it's a cakewalk. I only need to cast the skill once, the buff will last for 20 seconds and within the time, I'm able to get her to second phase. Because Renala has more mobility now, I need to cast the skill more often as soon as I can reach her. The damage from this weapon is undoubtedly a lot, so I believe I can defeat her pretty fast. And yeah, I was right, I beat her before she can summon the dragon. Since I already used those weapons, I need more for the rest of the bosses. The seal is now open and I have access to the end of Rani's questline. In this moment, I can get 3 of the most crucial armaments for the late game bosses. Dark Moon Greatsword, Royal Greatsword, and Adula's Moonblade. The first one of the list is Adula's Moonblade. And I need to kill the dragon, Adula, I think that's his name, in order to get it. I never had a problem taking down a dragon, but this guy over here is on another level. Most of the time I died because of being greedy, but the other time it's just straight up bullcrap. It has this one move where it casts a pile of homing crystals that can deal a lot of damage. I still have problem to dodge that even on these days. It took me an hour to finally beat it and I can assure you that wasn't a pleasant fight. I really hate it. Okay so, well at least that's done. And I can meet my waifu. Get married on the spot and accept her wedding gift, which is the Dark Moon Greatsword. I definitely use her gift to kill her royal companion. Uh, I had to do this, it's the same case with Alexander, but man, I really need his weapon. So therefore, Blight is now slain and the royal greatsword become my possession. It's time to fight the main boss, which is Morgoth. So because these three weapons and spells I have currently, I think the Dark Moon Greatsword is suitable for Morgoth until I realize the weapon deals too much damage to him. Yeah, you heard me right, too much damage. Good weapons will come in handy for late game bosses, so I think uh, I have to save it at least for Godskin Duo or Malekith. So yeah, I decided to pause the fight for a bit and look at my inventory, and I still have one weapon that I completely forgotten, the Frozen Needle. I don't really like rapiers in general, so I don't expect anything from this weapon. It has 60 frost build up, which is pretty decent on its part. I don't mind having to fight Morgoth with baby damage, but some of his attacks are barely dodgeable for me. So I don't know if I have enough flash to refill my health. Good thing about this weapon is its speed. That really helps me to land more than 1 attacks on Morgoth on certain openings. But I have to rely more on its Edge of War, Impaling Trust. At least, it deals more damage than regular light attacks. His first phase lasts like 2 or 3 minutes, which is pretty long. I can be more aggressive, but I have to deal with his attacks if I did so. And I cannot risk it that much. I choose the safe approach instead. One moment, I finally inflict the Frostbite on him, but I still need to land more damage to reach his second phase. Honestly, his second phase took even longer. 5 minutes. Can you imagine how patient I am? I'm already running out of flasks at this point because I used too many of them on the first phase, so I really need to play this very very carefully. I become too cautious to the point where I don't even take any risk at all. Big opening, attack, skedaddle, repeat. Every single time. We both on low health and I thought by reposting him, it will inflict frostbite automatically. But he has more resistance now so I don't think this is happening. I keep saying something like don't get greedy, don't get greedy but yeah because like, I cannot waste another 10 minutes for this single boss.
And finally, my faith is rewarded by this W. And see how our faith has been rewarded. You know, it took me three days to reach the mountaintop of the giants. Not because I procrastinated by watching anime or something, but because fighting Astal and any other side bosses took me forever. So now I acquired the new smithing stone bell bearing, which I probably not gonna use because most of my weapons require the somber smithing stone. But that's okay. I just have to be prepared in case I have to use them. Upon reaching the fire giant, there is a TB a mariner close to Castle Soul that drops this weapon called Health and Steeple. So I beat the lady, destroy her boat, and acquire the weapon. So to fight the fire giant, I'm using the royal greatsword I got from Blight. The weapon has this unique Ash of War called the Wolf Assault. It's the same case with Dragon Halberd, but it doesn't buff the weapon after casting the skill. So this time I have to strictly use its Ash of War only. Also, the weapon is kinda heavy, so I have to wear this skirt for medium equipment. I might underestimate this weapon a lot, but holy damn, it deals tons of damage on Fire Giants though. A single hit to break his leg. I was concerned because Fire Giant has the most resistance to Frostbite, and usually, using those weapons are just torturing myself. After further observations, apparently upon using the Wolf Assault, the weapon actually lands 3 attacks. The last hit which is the Frost Explosions actually deals the least amount of damage compared to the first 2 hits. I think the first 2 hits are more physical damage, but I'm not sure. His second phase is not really problematic. I just have to follow him whatever he rolls around. It's taking more time since I can only land one hit before he rolls away. Wolf Assault really takes some time to cast, but it probably deals the same amount of damage as jump attacks using this weapon. So I beat him. Not my first try, but it's still very satisfying nonetheless. This is probably my new favorite weapon. Since we are reaching late game now, I think it's time to go all out. I have to dive deep into Giants Conquering Hero Grave, which is located still in the mountaintop of the Giants. This dungeon is quite annoying and I don't like it a single bit. But at the end of the dungeon, there is a boss that can drop a pretty good weapon called Zamor Curve Sword. I didn't even waste any more time, I have to get everything for the final boss. I went to Rani's location, killed the three wise dogs, and get the ultimate spell, Rani's Dark Moon. Well, uh, it's not actually the ultimate spell, I just want to sound cool when I say that. To strengthen my spell power, I got the Graven School Talisman, which I'm gonna equip when using sorceries. I could get the Graven Mass Talisman instead, but I have to beat Commander Nile and I cannot afford to waste my weapons for him. So I switch up my staff from Astrologer Staff to Lusat Staff. Sorry, Lusat Glintstone Staff, because it's a superior staff for sure. I have to make sure I can get all these stuffs before burning the Earth Tree, just to be safe. Facing Gutskin Duo now, and I'm glad I didn't use this weapon when fighting Morgoth. This is the Dark Moon Great Sword. It has 55 build up, but the most important thing is about this weapon skill, the Moonlight Greatsword. It can shoot projectiles mixed with magic and ice, and the range is quite far as well. This will come in handy when fighting Godskin Duo. So a day before, I look at Reddit to see any Godskin Duo advice without using sleep pods or summons. So let's put all of these lessons to practice. Despite being aggressive to one of them, I can safely target the fat one by shooting him from afar. The weapon doesn't have a long recovery time, so it's a win for me. I have to rely solely on the weapon skills and if I'm lucky enough to hit them 4 times in a row, I can break their stance and repose. The weapon skill actually drains your stamina a lot so I have to pay attention to that and also I have to kill the fat one as fast as I can before he turns into giant donut and ram towards me. On the other hand, I don't really have any problem with the skinny one other than dodging my attacks but it can be easily overcome by cornering him or maintaining the range. So yeah, this is my second time ever I beat them solo without summon and without sleeping pots and I'm pretty proud of it.
We're getting there. For Malekith, I'm using the Zamor Curved Sword since it has a decent attack speed for its light attack, which is something I really need when fighting Malekith. On my last video, I was struggling so bad over his first phase, but now things are different. Well, not really actually, but he didn't take me as long as before to reach his second phase. So this weapon has a unique skill called Zamor Ice Storm, but it's basically useless for Malekith. Regular light attacks work better than the skill. Honestly, I think no matter what melee weapons I use, the key on taking him down is just being patient. His first phase can be tricky and for me, I need at least 2 minutes to get to his second phase because he has very small openings and most of them can be fake. Moving to second phase, things are far easier. If I'm not feeling confident enough, I just have to wait until he does these all around attacks and I can land one or two hits after that. Kinda ironic for me to say this, but his openings on the second phase are more visible to and easy to dodge. I think I'm able to avoid all of his attacks if this is a no hit playthrough, but I'm actually lying. I still got hit sometimes when I didn't pay enough attention to his moves. You can actually force him to do the all-around attacks every time by maintaining your range with him. Usually Malekith has two different moves when you're a bit far from him, but luckily for me, he did that move most of the time so I can land some counter-attacks afterwards. The battle was ended marvelously by the Frostbite. So I think I'm gonna use Rani's Dark Moon now. After leveling up my intelligence to 63 and combined with Stargazer Heirloom, I can easily reach 68 but because I know how long it is to cast a single moon, I have to take Gideon in one shot, if possible. So the Snow Witch Hat increases the Cold Sorcery by 10%, Lusat Glintstone Staff, I don't know if it has any effects for Cold Sorceries but it's one of the best staff if I'm not wrong, and I use Magic Shrouding and Intelligence Knot Crystal Tear that Unfortunately, I forgot to record when I was acquiring these, so I don't know exactly if these combinations will help me to increase the damage output, but I didn't kill him in one hit. And I died. I realized because I couldn't kill him in one shot and it already took half of my FP when casting the spell, I have to get Cerulean Amber Talisman just so I can cast the spell twice before drinking the flask. Despite the slow casting time, this spell is really effective against Gideon. The moon actually protects me from the incoming projectiles, so yeah, it's really useful. With Gideon using full magic attacks, it's definitely a huge disadvantage to him. I might need 4 to 5 hits to kill Gideon because I couldn't outspeed him when he was healing, but nonetheless, I still beat him. Back on using full melee against Godfrey. Only two armaments left from my inventory and I'm using Helfen's steeple. The weapon has unique Ash of War called Ruinous Ghost Flame. It gives weapon buff with frostbite buildup as usual. Also, I saw a pause somewhere that the spell blade set actually gives you boost on magic weapon skill. I don't know if that affects this one but I'm wearing the pants and the gloves. I can say I got overwhelmed by Godfrey. I never get used to great sword when fighting this kind of boss. It took me a while to get comfortable with the weapon honestly and the buff actually only lasts for a couple seconds so I have to find another window to recast the skill. Overcoming his first phase only took me a few tries but I always die on his second phase. It seems like I couldn't make a single mistake or he's gonna obliterate me in one hit. Same with my previous run, the only opening for Hora Luke is when I successfully dodged his grab attacks which can be tricky.
One openings only works for weapons with fast attack speeds and it's definitely not compatible with health and steeple. I can say only one opening is safe enough for me to land a single hit, so the frostbite buildup most likely already on cooldown state. That one opening can be used to attack or heal or recast the weapon skill. This will cause the battle to take so much time and it's probably gonna be the same case as Morgoth. It took forever. The final fight with Radagon, I'm using my last piece of my juicer. It's the Adula's Moonblade. Since I'm going full sorcery here, I need to make sure I got everything on hand. So to decrease the FP consumption, I got the Primal Glintstone Blade from the Jellyfish Sister. It's actually one of the sad slash wholesome moments in the game. And speaking about wholesome, I also got to barricade myself from the Elden Stars by getting the Crimson Hole Crystal Tear. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I still have trouble to pronounce that word. So I have fully prepared my whole arsenal to claim the Elden Throne, so let's face Radagon now. So Radagon allows you to hit him three times if you fast enough before starting taking actions against you. I realize Adula's Moonblade is fast enough to level regular dex weapons, so I don't really have to worry about it. I still need to match his pattern at the beginning of the fight, so obviously this will take a while and many deaths for sure. Despite having resistance to most status effects except fire, the frost and magic damage actually deals a lot of damage here. Maybe because I have high intelligence if that affects anything. Radagon is unpredictable, so the most effective way to gatekeep his move is to stay super close to him. At least by doing so, I can avoid most of his lightning attacks. If I have to observe him deeply, I think the only opening I have is when he does his holy attacks. There are some holy attacks variations, but his only safe opening are the holy attacks with hammer. Every opening only allows me to hit him once, but that's actually enough in my opinion. I can land more consecutive attacks at the beginning of the battle, as I said before, but also on the start of his second phase. One big advantage of using this spell, it has massive range of attacks and also it shoots a short projectile every slash. But I don't really use a projectile though since Radagon can deflect them most of the time. So yeah, let's go! Radagon? More like Rade. Gone. Okay, I'll stop it there. Speaking about projectiles, it's more useful for Elden Beast though. Honestly, I cannot really say anything about this fight because Elden Beast behave the same way every time. I have to be aggressive and keep running towards him, same pattern as usual. I'll let you know, I only bring 4 Crimson Flasks and the rest I converted them to Cerulean Flasks. I know I can take Radagon with 2 Cerulean Flasks minimum, but I have to be super careful to not get hit at all, so I will have some emergency flasks for Elden Beast. Because I used 2 Cerulean Flasks on for Radagon, 5 more for Elden Beast, actually more than enough. He used Elden Stars at some moment. But I came in prepared, so I drink the flask and watch those glowing things tickle my butthole. And I finally kill him before he can cast the holy rain. So yeah guys, I beat Elden Ring and this time I picked the best ending. This is by far the longest run I did, maybe because I encountered a lot of more bosses than usual. I'm actually happy I didn't summon anything this time. W well, except for Radon, but that's an exception. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this whole playthrough. As usual, let me know if I did something wrong or if I missed something in the comments down below. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.